Hello dears, today I will tell you about my old solar collector and upgrade it a little. So, the collector consists of 4 wooden bars and plywood, which are fastened with screws. Between them is sandwiched foil insulation. For easy transport and installation has two handles and two legs. Sealing was achieved by means of tape. Since I didn't have a large sheet of plywood, I picked up three small pieces. All the details are covered with some varnish. I temporarily unscrewed the arms and legs. I bought this aluminum foil in the hardware store. It is designed for heat and steam insulation of premises. When working with it, be sure to use gloves. I did not remove the old insulation, because it is very important to keep the heat inside the collector. To avoid unnecessary operations, you can cut the foil sheet with the sides. At the commerce cut for squares, the sides of which are equal to the height of the bars. Oh, if that thought had come to me a little earlier. I went the more difficult way and first made a rectangle for the base. I decided to stick the foil on a double-sided adhesive tape, but it was not a very convenient way. Better to use a normal tape. After a label base cut narrow strips for the sides and glued them. Now take the refrigerator coil and install it in the collector. For copper pipe is made of special holes. Pierce the foil in the right places and insert the ends of the radiator. Of course the collector housing must be made based on the size of the condenser coil. Fix it with tape. Perhaps this is the easiest option. That's what we have here. In the hardware store I bought a roll of stretch film. It will wrap the device. Need just 3 layer, but can be 5. It is important to reel up the film with enough force, but so that it does not crumple. The surface should be as smooth as possible. Now it remains to steal the ends and the collector is almost ready. Wind the tape on the end of the coil. Then the PVC tube is tightly put on it. And now you can screw the handles and legs. Shop Banggood sent me a submersible water pump. The review is on the channel, the tip is at the top right. The pump is powered by 12 volts, power 5 watts, full protection against water ingress IP68. The maximum height of the liquid lifting through the pipe is 3 meters. The pump capacity is 240 liters per hour. This pump is working properly for many months. Connect the tube to the pump outlet. Next is an automatic voltage converter. Stabilizes the selected output voltage regardless of the input voltage. I soldered the wires to him. White plus, yellow minus. I connected the power 12 volts and set the output voltage to 12 volts. Now one of the most important parts is the solar battery. There are special cables with MC4 connectors. Even in the dark room produces almost 12 volts without load. Its characteristics 18 volts 25 watts. There are convenient holes in the corners of the solar battery, for which it can be hung. 
for easy connection of devices to the solar panel, I also ordered special MC4 connectors. The quality of production is excellent. All the great twists and snaps. I'll show you how I soldered the wires to them. For crimping the MC4 tips you can use a special tool called a crimper. I'll just solder it. We clean the wires and deserve them. Also do with the terminal, only it must be pre-bent. Tinning is good. Now solder the wire to the terminal. Clamp the wire with pliers. Everything is ready and you can assemble the connector. Connect the solar battery to the input of the converter and check the output voltage. It is better to do this in the bright sun, so that the output was a maximum of 12 volts. I did a little less. The connection diagram looks like this. General view of the test stand. Looks cool, huh? I have already connected everything, and now I will tell you more. The solar panel is connected to the input of the converter and the pump is connected to the output. It is lowered into the water tank to the bottom. From the pump the pipe goes to one of the solar collector inputs. The tube from the other ends is lowered back into the tank. Pay attention to the water in the tubes. When the sun ceases to illuminate the solar panel the pump is turned off. As soon as it is again illuminated by the sun, the pump starts to work again and drives the water through the heated copper tube from the bottom up. Thus water circulates only when the sun shines. At the beginning of the day the water temperature in the tank is about 21 degrees. After some time the water at the bottom of the barrel rose to 24 degrees. By the way, this huge tank can hold 50 liters of any liquid. At constant circulation, the water at the outlet of the collector is more than 5 degrees. After 2 hours of working, the water temperature increased by 13 degrees. If the pump is placed in the middle or at the top of the barrel, the heating efficiency increases. The temperature was over 40 degrees Celsius after about 3 hours of operation. And the water was warm all over the barrel. With smaller volumes, everything is faster. Much depends on the angle of sunlight on the collector, its ceiling, weather conditions and other factors. I think that with the bright sun and the insulation of the water tank, the temperature will be over 45 degrees and more. Well, it's heated to 40 degrees. Despite the fact that the sun is often hidden behind the clouds, so no circulation or heating there. It is an electronic thermostat that allows you to control various devices depending on the selected temperature. It also has an acrylic body. Let's get him together quick. It's an amazing feeling when you tear off the protective film. And there are so many of these details. Very high quality everything is done, nice working with it. So you do not get bored while I assembling the body. I will say that the device is excellent. Temperature data are displayed fairly accurately. I'll leave a link to the module in the description. You can also ask questions in the comments. Even extra parts left, it's a night gift. The device is assembled and you will need to mount the temperature sensor in the collector, but a little later. Now let's unpack the electric valve, made quite high quality. Works from 12 volts. When the voltage is applied the valve opens. 
In this scheme, the water tank is located above the collector and when the water is heated to the desired temperature, the valve opens and part of the warm liquid is drained by gravity to another container. When the sensor senses the temperature drop to the specified value, the relay breaks off the contact and the electric valve closes. Instead of the valve, you can install a pump, then the location of the tank does not matter. The main thing is that the temperature sensor in the collector is located closer to the exit of the coil. In this case, the pump will drive warm water throughout the radiator tube until it is replaced by cold water. If the sensor is placed at the entrance, it will instantly cool down and heated water will not even have time to leave the collector. The effectiveness of this method is quite low. First, the water needs some time to heat, and secondly, the warm water cools down quickly, especially in small quantities. Need some insulated tank or thermos, which will reduce heat loss. Here is another scheme. Here water circulates in one and the same capacity. This method is also ineffective. We need to use a thermos tank. We'll install a temperature sensor in the solar collector. I just taped it to the coil. For the sensor, it is desirable to make an additional hole in the frame. Or you can do it next to the radiator outlet. Seal with hot glue. As I said before, the pump must be connected to the other end of the condenser coil. Now with the help of the thermostat at the outlet you can get water with a higher temperature but in smaller quantities. I have it set on cooling to 40 degrees Celsius. The hysteresis is equal to 2. When the temperature drops to 40 degrees the relay opens, the pump is switched off. The pump is switched on at 42 degrees. The water temperature may differ by several degrees from the sensor readings. I even managed to heat the water over 50 degrees, then the thermometer and the scale. As the circulation of warm water in the sensor area is replaced by cold water. And gradually the temperature drops. It is a controller for solar panel. The thing is great, if you are interested, I will make a separate review on it. It is mainly designed to connect lighting. For our task, controller alone cannot cope. Namely, I wanted it to supply output voltage only when the solar panel is illuminated by the sun and interrupt the supply when the sun goes beyond the clouds, but this mode is not found. Together with the controller you will need to use a 12 volt relay module with a photoresistor. For example, here is touch. Links to it and all other components will be in the description below this video. The controller comes with detailed instructions in Chinese and English. If you want, you can read. And I'll show you the wiring diagram for our project. The controller is connected to the above mentioned relay module with a light sensor, which by means of a relay controls the pump depending on the illumination. It can be adjusted by built-in potentiometer. Also 12 volt battery is connected to the controller. But here is a simple autonomous scheme for water circulation. Enough solar panel at 12 volts and 10 watts with the stock. The pump is the same, 12 volt, 5 watt. You can do without the solar panel. Need a battery or power supply for 12 volts. It uses a relay module with a photoresistor. You can connect a thermostat instead and the trigger temperature is set less, for example 30 degrees. The water heated by the collector will not remain in it when the sun disappears behind the clouds, but completely leaves it, thanks to the sensor. Are now conclusions. For me the easiest and cheapest way to circulate water was the most effective. Others also deserve attention. It all depends on the specific conditions and the task. Each of you can use one of the options or come up with your own. Perhaps you will come up with the use of these components, which is relevant to you now. In any case, creativity is great. It's so cool to do something with your own hands. I hope this video was useful for you. Links to all the components I will leave in the description below this video. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments. Good luck! Bye!